This installation video will cover many two-handle, four-inch, center-set bathroom faucets. This model is mounted in a three-hole sink when the hole spread on the sink is four inches across. For this video installation, we'll be using the Pasadena 4-inch Center Set Bathroom Faucet. This product should be installed in accordance with all local and state building codes. These are the recommended tools that you'll need for this installation. Plumber's putty, an adjustable wrench, plumber's tape, and some safety glasses or goggles. Additional helpful tools are a flashlight and a cleanup cloth. Some installations may require new shutoff valves or other additional tools, which are not covered in this video. Now, you've already removed your old faucet and cleaned the area of the sink where your new faucet will go. Your water supply valves are still shut off, so let's get started. Take your new faucet out of the box. First, remove the two wing nuts from the threaded faucet shanks and set them aside for the moment. You should have the following items your pre-assembled faucet body, two wing nuts, one pre-assembled pop-up drain assembly, and a lift rod. Apply a small amount of putty to the groove along the bottom outer edge of the putty plate and apply a small amount of putty to the groove along the bottom outer edge of the Now go under the sink and hand tighten the two wing nuts onto the two threaded faucet shanks. Now you're ready to connect the existing water lines to the faucet. Hot always connects to the left inlet and cold water supply lines connect to the right inlet. With an adjustable wrench, connect the water supply lines for your hot and cold water. Insert the lift rod through the hole in the back of the faucet and allow it to sit flush. Now that the faucet is connected and secured, it's time to head back to the sink to install your pop-up drain assembly. First off, you want to disassemble the pop-up assembly before you install it into your sink. Remove the stopper from the flange. Then remove the flange from the drain body by unthreading it counterclockwise. Next, unscrew the ball rod nut from the drain body. And then remove the spring clip from the ball rod and set them all aside for the moment. To insert the drain body into the hole of the sink, first apply a bead of plumber's putty under the flange and then remove any excess plumber's putty. Wrap some Teflon tape around the threads of the drain body. Then, from under the sink, thread it to the bottom of the flange. Tighten the drain body's lock nut until the rubber washer seats securely inside the drain opening. Tighten and make sure to adjust so that the ball rod opening faces the rear of the sink. Then insert and secure the drain assembly into the P-trap pipe fitting and again tighten by hand. Before dropping the stopper into the drain body, you need to determine if you prefer to have the stopper fixed, which provides a tighter seal when the drain is closed, but requires some uninstall of the stopper connection if it needs to be removed for cleaning. Or if you prefer it mounted in a removable form where it can more easily be removed from the drain and is easier for cleaning purposes. It's completely up to you how you prefer to install the stopper. If you prefer the stopper to be fixed, then drop the stopper into the drain body with the offset slot facing the rear. Then go below the sink and insert the shorter end of the ball rod into the opening in the back of the drain body and through the offset slot. Then hand tighten the ball rod nut, but make sure not to over tighten. If you prefer the stopper to be removable, then drop the stopper into the drain body with the offset slot facing the side. Then go below the sink and insert the shorter end of the ball rod into the opening in the back of the drain body and alongside the offset slot. Although you may not be able to see it, the ledge on the stopper is now resting on top of the rod. Next, 
hand tighten the ball rod nut and make sure not to over tighten. To connect the lift rod to the drain assembly, start with the ball rod in the down position. Place one end of the spring clip onto the end of the ball rod. Insert the ball rod through any hole on the strap connection. Now, we've chosen to insert the ball rod through the third hole in the strap for our installation. Then, secure the strap and the ball rod by connecting the other end of the spring clip onto the ball rod. Now, with the ball rod still in the bottom position, insert the bottom of the lift rod into the hole at the top of the strap. If needed, you can adjust the lift rod height by removing and choosing a different hole in the strap to mount the ball rod through. Above the deck, be sure to leave enough space between the lift rod knob and the spout body when the lift rod is down. Once you've determined the proper position of the lift rod and the drain assembly, tighten the screw on the strap with your wrench. Return topside and confirm that the pop-up is operating properly. If necessary, make any adjustments. All that's left to do now is to check for leaks. Go back under the sink and turn on the hot and cold water valves. Make sure the water lines are not dripping or spraying any water. Return topside and before you run any water to be sure to remove the aerator from the faucet's head and allow the hot and cold water to run for at least 15 seconds to clear the water lines. Then reinstall and tighten the aerator. We hope this video has made your DIY experience a success. At Fister, your experience matters to us. And we are committed to providing you the finest products and best customer experience. Fister, it's the experience that matters.